Our next guest is a legendary radio personality, especially here in uh, the New York area. He uh, worked at a local radio station for a while until July of 1971 when he made his debut on WNEW-FM. <laughs> Where he was heard for the next 25 years. And during that 25-year period, he interviewed, of course, all of the big names in rock. Most notably, John Lennon, who he spent an unforgettable afternoon on the air with. He is, without question, one of the true pioneers of free-form progressive rock. Will you please welcome Dennis Elsus. Many of you grew up with WNEWFN. And... Not only because I worked there, but because I'm very proud of, of, of what we did through the years. We were the station where rock lived. And whether, it, thank you, and whether it was the Grateful Dead or whether it was Led Zeppelin or whether it was the Who, they all came up to visit. No member of the Beatles, either as a group or as a solo performer, had ever, vis had ever visited the radio station. And six months after I joined in July of 1971, by the winter of 1972, I'd become the station's music director. So suddenly I was getting a chance to meet people, interview people, and be very involved with the day-to-day. -day. And a friend of mine who worked for Capitol Records in the summer of 1974 said, if you show up at Record Plant tonight, I'll let you sit in on the, on the John Lennon session. Well, of course, I'll be there. What time? Where do I go? What do I do? Now, this was... Walls and Bridges? Yes, John, this was, this was the Walls. end of Walls and Bridges. And so now it's 1974, and I'm seeing it. And briefly after the session, I get to meet him for two seconds, and I get to chat with May Pang. May, of course, was who he was living with at the time. And I just, I don't know what came over me, but I just said, you know, if John wants to come up to the station to uh, talk about the new album, we'd love to have him. What could I lose, right? It, I might as well ask. And you said this to May. I said that to May, yeah. And uh, lo and behold, a few days later when the phone rang and it was May and she said, yeah, John, John would like to come up. When would you like him to show up? <laughs> and knowing that I was on the air Saturday and Sunday afternoons, I said, how about uh, Saturday at four? <laughs> and, you know, within a few days it was all worked out. So Saturday, September 28th, 1974, Get on the air at 2 o'clock. It's a rainy Saturday afternoon. He said, your guests are here. And I said to the engineer, because he was the only other person up there, make sure you're running tape. And I walked downstairs, and I put on the longest record I could find, which was the entire side two of Ballet for a Girl in Buchanan, Chicago, from the second album. <laughs> and so when the interview begins, we are ending with the Ballet for a Girl in Buchanan, and the next two hours are just, you know, the best time I ever had on the radio. Why don't you just say hello? Surprise, surprise. It's <laughs> Dr. Winston O'Boogie at your service. <laughs> I am Dennis. It's a surprise, actually. And he didn't come out of a cake or anything like that. John Lennon is with us, and we'll spend some time this afternoon to talk about the new album and maybe even do some uh, disc jockeying. Yeah, yeah, it's my second favorite occupation. The interview starts, and when you hear it, if you've ever heard it in its entirety, it's very clearly a promotion. Both of you would, would know this, and, and many of you in the audience would know this. John was there. I knew John wasn't there to discuss with me my favorite Beatle albums and side one, cut two of Rubber Soul. You know, that's not why he was there. He was there to promote a brand new album, and I understood that. And so I was very focused on doing that. And I was a little hesitant. I was very hesitant to talk about the Beatles. You know, who knew? And at some point, we're talking about whatever gets you through the night, and we're talking about the first few cuts. And while the music is on, I make a reference to Yesterday and Today, the famous Beatle cover Butcher album. Again, many of you are familiar with that. And I go, gee, I wonder if you could ever peel it off. And I go back and pull the album out of the wall, and John and I are just sort of kidding. And he starts to tell a story about the day that photo was taken, why it was taken with them wearing uh, butcher smocks. And I said, can you hold that? Can we tell it on the air? He said, sure. And I... And I realized that he was a Beatle fan, too. And that broke, that broke um, for me, any nervousness that I had. And I could actually, there's a point there where I hear my voice relax. And so the rest of the afternoon becomes a very comfortable mix, talking about the Beatles, discussing with me quite candidly that he had seen Paul, that they might get back together at some point in time, says 
you know, it's very cordial, very cordial, then very frank discuss discussion of the immigration problems that, that Bob is speaking about. Luckily for me, I have this wonderful interview, and all of you seem to like it as much as I do. Thank you.